ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Go to ZocDoc.com BCC and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com BCC. That's joinhoney.com slash BCC. Welcome Welcome to to the the chain. chain. This is the BCC Club with your host, Sarah Shower and Kendall Landreth. And each week we're going to be talking about the weirdest parts of the internet and also having a special guest on. Yes. But that is what the BCC Club is. <laughs> that is an incredible yeah. description. Mm-hmm. This week's topic, topic is Disney adults. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Very scary. But first, how was your week? Um, It was really, it was a lot. I had my first stand-up show. Well, I had my you first- You did so good. You were so good. Really? You did. You know you did good. Okay, I did. Yeah. But like, I had uh, my first stand-up show last Tuesday, and I felt like everyone laughed at everything, and I yeah. felt like it flowed pretty naturally, and I wasn't too nervous, which was really, really, and I, I just like, I want to do more stand-up, and I've like talked to like my comedian friends, and everyone's like, you should do um, like open mics, and then mm-hmm. everyone who's like, it's like two groups. Everyone's like, do open mics or don't. Open mics are embarrassing. I'm like, I just need to practice in front of people. You know? I think it's good then to do open mics because yeah. yeah, you won't get anything out of open mics besides like practice, which is yeah. for yourself. So then just do that. Sometimes it's hard because um, I've never done an open mic, but I've heard people say it's like the audience is other comedians, mm-hmm. so it's a tough crowd. Yeah. So sometimes you're like, is this practice even helpful? Because these people are actively trying to make my performance terrible. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing is like, uh, oh my gosh, I was talking to a female comedian. It was like, I okay, she's a very nice girl. But she was like uh, talking about, you know, stand-up comedy is like a whole different beast from social media. Like, yeah. the guys here are tough. You know, some of them can be jerks. And I was like, that doesn't happen online. Yeah. And like, uh, <laughs> guys on the internet are so sweet. Yeah. They're like, so nice. So like, you like can't even imagine. Exactly. Like, Male influencers, notoriously nice. You know what I mean? And so then also, um, I mean, I understand it's different and like that the pacing is different and there's a crowd physically there. But I feel like I, everything that she warned me about, I'm like, I don't know if you know what social media is, but I've dealt with almost all of this. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, and what's nice about stand up, it's like you don't really have to talk to anybody. Yeah. Beside, unless you want to. I did stand up in New York and I, I felt like the scene in New York was a little different. It feels like in LA, the male stand-up comedians are like gym rats almost. Like yeah. all of them are like that type of person. In New York, it would be like 60-year-old men mm-hmm. for, who like lived in New Jersey. Yeah. And they would say things that made me feel like it was 1950. Like they would be like... They'd call you Dame. It, like, <laughs> literally, like I would walk in and they'd be like, are you doing this show? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I, I didn't know we had singers here tonight. I'm like... What? Like, what's happening? It was why's so that crazy. girl? Why is that girl wearing pants? Yeah, you know <laughs> that's what it was. Mean. And they would be so, um, they would be so, uh, you know, narcissistic, or mm-hmm. they would just think they were incredible. And they'd be like, "Listen, I've been doing this for forty years." And I was like, "Stop bragging about doing stand up in the same bar for forty years. That's yeah. not the." flex that you think it is. yeah oh my gosh one time uh like last year i there's this male comedian that i'm friends with and he's like older and he was he invited me to one of his shows because i was asking him how it works and we go back in the green room and there's this female comedian who um she looks at me and looks at him and she's like is this your girlfriend i'm like 30 years younger than this guy and yeah. i was like I'm, she's not talking to me but i was like i'm a lesbian and she's like so this is your girlfriend? And I was like, she's like ignoring me. And I was like, what? I've seen your stuff and you are not funny. <laughs> so like, um, but yeah. Well, it's dangerous. I feel like it is dangerous. Like sometimes there'll be one, you either, I feel like in comedy, mm-hmm. a, a person who identifies as a woman can either be an ally to you or they're like 50 times worse than every male comedian you've ever met. And they're like yeah. so mean to you yeah, <laughs> because they're like, I am the one woman in comedy. You shall die before yeah. I let you in here. And it's very scary. It is uncomfortable. But something really funny happened um, on Friday 
my partner this is like a segue and this is unrelated um my partner like produces like edm music mm -hmm. and they told me that they got invited to a show like they used the word show and i was like since they're starting off i wanted to support them yeah so the show is in like joshua tree it's like four hours outside of la with traffic mm -hmm. and so we were in like rush hour traffic on friday we drove to the middle of the desert in the middle of the night right. and to get to the festival there we had to drive on five miles of dirt road I know. Oh. And so, like, there were no lights at all. Like, we were guessing. And I was, like, my suspension's fucked. But, like, um, we were <laughs> we were driving, and I was, like, mentally preparing for something, for us to be, like, trafficked yeah. or something. But uh, we got there. There's two cars and two RVs. And then there's this, like, hippie commune. Like, there are, like, blankets all around and then, like, lights flashing. But they're not, like, professional lights. They're kind of, like... Yeah, they're flashlights yeah. that two people are <laughs> yeah, holding. On the they, side. they just have low battery. It's yeah. not even a setting. Um, but yeah. um, this lady in this tight-fitting unicorn, like, child onesie... I love her. She's probably, like, 45. I have <laughs> such a clear picture of this woman. I've met her in my life, in my dreams. She comes up and she's like, let me help my partner set up. And then I was like, is there like a bathroom nearby? And she's like, I'll show you to the bathrooms. There's five small tents like facing each other in like a little circle, like Stonehenge, but with like shitters. And so um, she opens it up and there's a orange construction bucket with a toilet seat on it. <laughs> and there's already like poop down the side of it yeah and i can see it and she's like so uh these are the more natural way to poop in the wild and next to the construction bucket was another bucket with wood chips and toilet paper and she's like when you're done producing matter make sure matter matter make sure to put wood chips on it uh so we That's can return true. it to the earth yeah and i was like whatever I'm, I'm i'm mad at my partner because there's no one here you know they made me drive we can <laughs> did they know that was gonna happen no they didn't they didn't um, what did they th so they thought this was like like a coachella professional, or yeah. what did they think it was? well it was like 20 miles from like the coachella like city <sighs> yeah so they were like oh this is like a smaller festival so they're setting up for absolutely no one and i set up my light in the tiny tent so i can go pee and I do my business and I walk back out to where they are. And then so one girl pulls up in her car, gets out and goes to the bathroom, sets up her light. And I can see the full outline of her pulling down her pants. It was almost like a 50s like comedy sketch. Yes, yes, yes. Where like I can see the white Tent. Like in the Austin yeah. Powers. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where they're like in the tent and you can see them like having sex. Yeah, like the full silhouette. Like she and she pulled her pants down and sat down, put her elbows on her <laughs> knees, and she's just like pooping and for like five minutes and all I see is her like occasionally move and I'm like, that was just me. Oh yeah. And then we had to sleep in the car, but it was uh it was really fun. Oh my god. How much did they get paid a bunch of money for it? They got it was no, they got paid <laughs> no money for that. They got paid no money. Yeah. Oh, many mistakes were made to get to that point. Yeah, they said that I can make fun of them because that was like one of the stupidest decisions of their life. I did see a, <laughs> I did see a video that you posted on your Instagram of them mm -hmm. uh, playing music. Yeah, and I was like, it does seem like Sarah is the only person in this. Building. I was, I was the only person there, and then there were like two old guys who were in the RVs because they set up a full bar, mm -hmm. like a full pre-roofy bar. You know, like I love. That. I want to go to this festival. It was That's horrible. Fun. You know, I saw a lot of old people <laughs> this weekend when I went to. This sounds like I'm trying to make an awkward segue, no, but I'm really no, not. No, no. <laughs> Speaking of old people in RVs, I really did. I so I went to Magic Mike. Yeah, this week. Magic Mike. Was there Final elderly dance. male strippers? There was it, no. Well, so the movie. I oh, didn't, oh. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have clarified. I went to the movie Magic Mike: The Last Dance with my partner for Valentine's Day. We got there 20 minutes early, which is already an embarrassment. But we were there 20 minutes early. Nobody's in the theater except a very old man mm -hmm. and a very uncomfortable looking young woman. Yeah, they're sitting in the very back row. We look at our tickets. We're like. Somehow, the God has made this happen, and we are sitting directly next to these people. Yeah. So in an empty, massive theater, it's these two people sitting in full silence, and then we have to sit right next to them. Um. So that was already weird. And then a group of like 30, 60 year old women. Yeah. File into the theater. Mm -hmm. These women are the drunkest I've ever seen anyone in their yeah. entire life. And this was, they all had blankets. They yeah. all had, they've been preparing for this. They're in their pajamas. They're so ready. And it was like a, a loud, a loud theater. Mm -hmm. These elders were so excited to see <laughs> yes. Channing Tatum 
hump a bunch of stuff. <laughs> How big was the theater? It was it was like AMC. Oh, so it was a pretty big theater. It was not. I mean, probably. Wait, like, why um, were you following people. the rules so strictly that you sat next? If the theater was mainly empty, why didn't you just sit like wherever? Well, because we just. It was so early, so we were like, people are gonna show up, like because it was eventually like a packed house <laughs> to a Magic Mike premiere six years later. <laughs> <laughs> yes. it was, we were like, eventually people are gonna be here, and. It was just so funny that in the first couple minutes, the only seat, the only people who were in the theater were having to sit right next to each other. And it was this, yeah, this old man Mm -hmm. who, maybe I'm making bad assumptions, but was with this younger woman and she seemed like she did not want to be there. Yeah. And it was dead silent. It was just so (laughs) silent, except my partner and I kind of laughing, which we were trying not to, but it just felt too crazy. It was like, this is such a huge theater and we're having to sit. I'm like touching shoulders with this man. Yeah. It felt so awkward. Maybe it was a daddy-daughter date to see Magic Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I pray. I hope. Speaking of a daddy-daughter date, yes. some people do that at Disneyland. That is true. Hey, guys. Today's sponsor is ZocDoc. Me and ZocDoc go way back. When I first got fired and moved to L.A., I needed help finding a dentist because some of my teeth had unfortunately smelled really bad. And so with ZocDoc, I found my first dentist and psychiatrist. I had TRICARE. And you know, anyone who's ever had military health insurance, it's a nightmare. But ZocDoc is not. Thousands of medical professionals on ZocDoc are there to help you. They listen like a friend and give you the expert care you need. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Surprise twists might work for podcasts, but maybe not for medical care. Most likely not for medical care. Surprise! You have a medical issue. With ZocDoc, there are no alarms and no surprises. Choose from thousands of patient-reviewed doctors and specialists, browse doctor profiles, upload and verify your insurance information, and get the care you need. Go to ZocDoc.com slash BCC and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash BCC. ZocDoc.com slash BCC. Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Listen, I love to spend tons and tons of money that I do not have, and I should be allowed to do that. And thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Last week, I wanted to purchase a tiny mushroom nightlight for my bathroom. You might be thinking, Kendall, you don't need a tiny mushroom nightlight for your bathroom. That's ridiculous. And you're absolutely right. But also, stop. That's rude. And I wanted it. But I was feeling all this guilt about spending money on it. But I put it in my cart. And when I went to check out, the honey button appeared. And all I had to do was click apply coupons. I waited a few seconds as honey searched for coupons it can find for that website And it found one, and it was incredible, and I saved money, and it was amazing. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch those prices drop. And I got that mushroom nightlight, and it's incredible, and my my girlfriend loves it, and she said it was super cute. I also just got a new shoe rack. I saved $15 on it. You heard that right. I saved $15 on this shoe rack by using Honey. It was incredible. And what's so amazing about Honey is that you forget you even have it. And so then when you go to check out, you're all prepared to spend a certain amount of money. And then they say, hey, Honey over here, we're just going to save you $15 on the shoe rack. And it's just going to be incredible. And I just love it so much. It was so, it's just, Honey is so easy to use. Also, Honey doesn't just work on desktops. It also works on your iPhone. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on savings. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash BCC. That's joinhoney.com slash BCC. So today's topic is about Disney adults. Um, I do have a Disney adult in my life. Her name is Brittany Broski, and I just had to say, hey, Brittany, um, <laughs> not shitting on Disney adults at all right now. <laughs> We're going to talk about- We love them. The, we support them. Yeah. Here. Are you a Disney adult? Uh, no, but I'm definitely a Lego adult. Sure, sure, sure. I love Legoland. I, there's only three rides that adults can go on at Legoland, mm. but I mainly go to- <laughs> Touch the Legos. Oh, uh, yeah. And what? I go on the lazy river like four times. 
<laughs> you have a lazy river. Well, there? it's like uh, they have like all these like Lego um, like figures like set up. Like they have uh, like the Little Red Riding Hood in Legos, and so you can like go around and like see all these fairy tales. I don't even get out of the boat. They just like that's Sarah's spot, you know. Beautiful. That is mm-hmm. just beautiful. Um, I don't have any Disney adults in my life. My sister loves Disney, mm-hmm. um, but she grew up watching all the movies, and I never really did. I, I think because I had such bad ADHD, I couldn't sit through a movie as a child. So I like never watched any children's movies yeah. at all. So I never really got into it. But I do love Disneyland. Mm-hmm. What, I mean, if you did, if you remember any Disney mo- movies, <laughs> sorry. There you go. I just. What would be your favorite <laughs> Disney movie? My favorite Disney movie. My instinct was to say Shrek, which is not a Disney movie, but I do oh, love the movie Shrek. Is it Pixar? It's DreamWorks. Okay, which is which is Pixar? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I literally have They're three fully... Shrek posters on my wall, and I'm like, I have no idea. I know it's not Disney though. I do love Tangled. I love the movie Tangled, but that was that came out later in my life as a kid. I feel like I watched Dumbo a lot, which I would yeah. never watch now. It's Doesn't very his mom depressing. get like shot? Yes, oh. something happens. That's What's not with good. Disney and shooting the mom? All the moms are getting shot. Like Bambi, very upsetting. I feel like multiple. I think it's like they're just doing a real classic hero's journey. So at yeah. the beginning of every film, a parent has to die, mm-hmm. and it's always the mom. Which I don't know. Maybe we should be figuring out what that's about. We should be shooting the dads. Yeah, we should be <laughs> shooting more dads. <laughs> but. Um, So the definition of a Disney adult is an adult who loves all things Disney and spends a vast amount of money and time on Disney-related products and experiences. Mm -hmm. And so who are Disney adults? Disney adult is a slang term used disparagingly against adults who, whether they have kids or not, are overly obsessed with Disney and its products to the point where they treat it less like a company and more like a lifestyle Mm -hmm. and identity. And I want to make fun of them, but I can't simply for the fact that I have over $10,000 worth of Legos. (laughs) So... I yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Mm-hmm. And maybe I'm biased because the CEO of Legos follows me on Instagram. I told Wait, you that. No, I forgot that. Yeah. A fun fact I love to share with only you because you get so excited every Wait, time I tell can you. Can you send me their profile? Yeah. <laughs> what if uh, I've been blocked? <laughs> yeah. That's, they were they were like, I'm gonna follow you, but please do not <laughs> yeah. put Sarah in contact with me. Um, no, I, I didn't know. He followed me, and I don't know anything about Legos. I've never built Legos. I was saying the other day, I think I could really get into Legos, but it's so messy that I was like, I don't know if I want to go down that road. I mean, it's, you've had to dedicate a whole closet to your Legos. Well, yeah, I'm building a, a Lego room because I have this like massive closet slash small room, and I'm turning it into like a Lego um, den where I can it's go. Incredible. Yeah, because like my cat will just like jump on stuff, so it's nice to have like a closed off area. But yeah, it is a fairly expensive hobby. It's and expensive. It's a little messy. Because you, unless you organize it the way you organize it, but I don't have an extra room right now in my house. So I, I have not done that. But he followed me on Instagram and I was like, I should say something. Yeah. So I DM'd him back and I just said, I love Legos. And he said, I think, like, thank you. Send him my info. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. I'm going to. I'm going to. <laughs> um, yes, but I guess you can't really make fun of it. But I'm not into anything like that. So I can fully make fun of it. And mm-hmm. do you think it is? Yeah, yeah. I think it's crazy. <laughs> I think it's crazy. Despite the phrase being coined in the late 2010s, Disney adults have been growing trend since millennials and Gen Z grew up with the corporation's intellectual properties in the 1990s and 2000s, a time in which Disney was rapidly growing and have aged into adulthood but still held on to their 90s nostalgia in a form of corporate fan- fanaticism. fantasism. Yeah. I feel like I read that really good, actually. You did. Like, you were just, like, breezing through it. I have no memory of anything that I read, but I was like, I'm reading these words. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So while some proudly identify as Disney adults, the term is primarily used as a criticism or insult online towards those who refuse to grow up. Disney adults tend to spend a lot of money on Disney, like merch, park, reservations, hotels, cruises, and most Disney adults seem to be millennials. So yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I Disney adult is an insult like horse girl or millennial. <laughs> I don't think horse girls should be an insult. I know. It's just any time it's a particularly feminine interest, you have to make you have to make a label that you can totally disparage yeah. to just humiliate women for their interests. That's so true because they really don't have those for any male yeah. dominating interests. Like yeah. uh what's a male dominant? I don't like know. Like a anything football adult. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> they have those. Yeah. And those are, in my opinion, more disturbing because people get really Disney adults don't get angry unless, like, they're trying to buy a popcorn bucket or something. But besides yeah. that, they're pretty peaceful. Yeah. Football people are 
cuckoo for Cocoa Pops. When the uh, Eagles won the Super Bowl, they destroyed Philadelphia. First of all, I didn't know the Eagles won. Well, so uh, no, this is a couple alert. years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Were they competing this year? Um, they did, but okay. I think they lost. All right. Oopsie. But, oh, yeah, um, Kansas City. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, um, but I think of sports, like, got, men are allowed to like sports, but it's weird because, like, I also like K-pop. And so, mm-hmm. like, I have, like, different cards for, like, different K-pop people I like. And people think that's so weird. I'm like, baseball cards <laughs> have been around forever. <laughs> you buy yeah. shirts with someone's, yeah. like, I. that's mm-hmm. exactly what K-pop is. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That's, in- that's very, very true. Mm-hmm. So I think um, I'm going to reference the old pod, but on VCG, Brittany and I talked about like escapism a lot. And I think that sure. that's what we're going to talk about now, how Disney is a form of escapism. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it's a safe, magical space free from problems. And this is a quote from Jesse, 30, who's a Disney adult. Disney, to me, represents a safe, magical space where the weight of the world and its problems disappear. If I'm stressed at work, I listen to Disney Disney instrumentals in the background and everything seems lighter. And then another Disney adult, Missy, said, when I have my children and I'm up nursing in the middle of the night and I'm exhausted, I turn on Disney videos and YouTube and watch people walking through the parks. The what? thought of watching a video mm-hmm. of people walking through Disneyland is probably the least relaxing thought ever. And I think... <laughs> Her listening to music makes sense to me. I'm like, that, yeah, that totally I can understand. But when people are like, it's such a magical place where there are no problems, I'm like, have you ever fucking been to a theme park? Because that is what it is. Like, it is not peaceful. (laughs) There's crying children. Mm -hmm. Everyone is hungry and upset. And every parent has, like, spent way too much money Mm -hmm. and is, like, so stressed out that their kids aren't having fun and everyone's sweaty and everyone's... Any place where people are wearing a lot of fanny packs, that's not a peaceful place. (laughs) Yes. And I just imagine uh, this walking video. What point of view is it? Is it on the shoulders? Is it, like, mounted on the groin? Because imagine walking through Disney and all you see is like a bunch of butts and bike bicycle shorts yes you know yes <laughs> yeah or or just a bunch of kids like fully if it's like the stroller shot it's yeah. from inside the stroller just a bunch of kids like fully yes. shitting themselves yes. and like no one changing their that's one one issue I have with with parents these days mm-hmm. <laughs> and the all kids, days the fact that the kids People shit. are changing their diapers yes. enough I feel like every time I pass by a two year old I'm like is anyone checking out that kid's ass because Jesus Christ I don't mind theme parks and kids I think what absolutely repulses me to my core is a water park with kids oh yeah they could be as clean as they want but I know those kids pee in there and like I pee in there I'm gonna be honest <laughs> I pee in there. But like the last time I went to a water park, I was in the wave pool and there was like these two band-aids that were coming towards me. <laughs> and you know the harder you try to push a band-aid away. It comes faster because it comes back. Yeah. It ricochets back. I was screaming like I was drowning. <laughs> and I was just so afraid that I was going to get these Band-Aids on me. Oh, it's so gr- My dream, I've decided what I want to do for my birthday this year mm-hmm. is go to a magical place that I've just discovered called Schlitterbahn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never In been. In Texas. Uh, yeah, I'm going there. Oh, wow. I'm so excited, so... Hopefully there's no kids around. <laughs> there's going to be a fuck ton of kids. Hopefully there's no kids. <laughs> um, How... Okay, yes, escapism in mm-hmm. Disney. I, I don't understand how you could escape into Disney, but... Um, well, it's like, a, um, you know, like, it's like a fantasy. Like, when you're, like, escapism is applied to, like, a lot of, like, cosplay or, like, um, and like Disney, it's, like, where you're an adult and you want to, like, escape from your reality and just kind of, like, go where it's, like, more whimsical and fun yes. and okay to be weird. 100%. And yeah. I totally get that. I just think if I then went to buy a Rice Krispie treat and they were like, that's $29, mm-hmm. I would be like, I can't escape here anymore. <laughs> yes. This is devastating. <laughs> where did the meme slash term come from? As early as the 1990s, coverage of Disney's fairy tale Weddings program prompted plenty of sarcastic headlines about the grown people who want to get married in the vicinity of a cartoon mouse. (laughs) (laughs) That's a very funny way to put it. Uh, Tumblr, the center of the internet fandom culture, might be the origin of the Disney adult. There were popular Tumblr... Oops, I said Tumblr. There were popular Tumblr blogs about Disney bounding. Have you ever Disney bounded? No, but I know that like I know that we're probably going to talk about Disney bounding. But for those who don't know, you can't dress up in a costume of a character at Disney because they don't want kids to confuse you with the character yeah. and say like you know you're wasted on 
you know, <laughs> I don't know. And like alcohol. Yes. What do you mean? <laughs> no, no, I meant like I meant like a ride. Oh. <laughs> I was like, you're wasted. Like on the it's a small world ride. Yeah, yeah, when they're yeah, like yeah. mini. <laughs> yeah, there, there she is. So you have She's jumping in the water. <laughs> you can invoke the aesthetic of a certain character but you can't actually like dress in their outfit yes Mm -hmm. yes 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 um i could never every time i've gone to disney i'd be like i'll be like i should do that but i can never plan yeah in advance enough that far ahead so um tumblr also created the sparkly ultra feminine aesthetic currently associated with the disney adult think glittery cheshire cat gifts and tongue-in-cheek princess what memes (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I skipped a line so I thought it just ended in, in tongue in cheek princess yeah um, tongue in cheek princess memes that combine nostalgia with millennial perspective mm-hmm. uh, slowly there was more content on the internet aimed at poking fun of Disney adults like the 2014 uh, bust- bustle listicle nine things to never say to a Disney adult fan <laughs> let's read some of these because they will freak out I have a loaded handgun <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is it? Um, aren't Let's you too see. old for Disney? Oh, here's you never say that. Yeah, you never say that to a Disney adult. Big mistake. <laughs> the second one is adults who like Disney are weird. <laughs> Why would you say that to Just a Disney adult? Calling literally anyone weird is like so rude. This one feels weird to me. Why would this be an issue if you said this to someone? Oh, you're going to Disney? I haven't been there in years. <laughs> I don't know. They slap you right in the face. Years. (laughs) Get back in there. It's just too crowded. It is too crowded. You should be able to say that. They should be. Disney adults should want it to be less crowded. Yeah. It's way too crowded. Mm -hmm. Uh, The princesses are such bad role models. Why? What, they're all Um, sluts? What is it? (laughs) Wait, let me understand. Do Disney movies have some problematic tendencies? Absolutely for both boys and girls. However, that doesn't make them exclusively bad. Whatever, whatever. (laughs) Some even have feminist moments. And I'm not just talking about Brave and Frozen. And one of the good things about seeing, oh my God. So it's not even like bad influence, like she's a damsel in distress. It's the fact that it has some feminist overtones. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. That That is just very funny to me. Um, but you'd also don't want to say, you know, animals can't really talk, right? They've never met parrots. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love parrots. Um, I love there's, parrots. there was also the 2017 viral college humor video called um, "Adult Disney Fans Are Weird," and that's a video, so mm. you can watch that on your own. But the entitled "Childless Disney Millennials" became a meme in 2019, following a mom's irate Facebook post accusing non-parent visitors of depriving her child of a Mickey pretzel, prompting a trolling New York Post headline: "Sorry, childless millennials going to Disney World is weird." So apparently, I mean, I think that is weird. It Disney is made for kids. But you go, you probably go to Disney, right? No, I I've been to the last time I went to Disney, the last time I went to a theme park. Uh, you're not supposed to bring alcohol in the park. Yeah. And so, like, I um, I emptied out a sunscreen bottle in there the parking is. lot, and there I is. put Tito's in it. That is so <laughs> but like dangerous. The- you... You definitely drank sunscreen. Oh no, I I I felt the fucking sunblock, and I had like a <laughs> like a white like lip liner around, and I was like, <laughs> I look like a crazy person. But I was definitely drinking sunblock. Well, now they they have alcohol there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have their um. Well, it's not as uh, delightful as it may sound because it was a it's their their Star Wars yeah, bar, it's just... and you go in and they're like, okay, you've got fifteen minutes. <laughs> Order, you get one drink, and that's your limit, and then you're out of there, and you have to schedule a reservation like weeks. In yeah, advance. it's like terrible. They have like special drinks called like Pluto's Piss, and it's just <laughs> like a type of IPA they made at the park. <laughs> I just can't. I think it's hard being an adult because I go there probably once a year. I'll mm-hmm. go to Disney and it's fun for a day. And I and I and I do like it. And I have mm-hmm. a Universal Studios pass, which I'm a huge Universal Studios fan, but it doesn't compare. Disney's it's just a whole different level. The rides yeah. are incredible. It's like an art. It's it's amazing to me. But I would never go more than maybe once or twice a year. But it is for children. Yeah. And I think sometimes it can be very frustrating when you're there when you're trying to get genuine information and they've gotten so enthralled in this like we are magic this is a magical place and we're all playing a role yeah we're like we we're going to get on the new Star Wars ride and it was like 11 p.m. so we only had like an hour like we could do yeah. one more ride and we were just trying to like figure out which one we wanted to do and so my partner went up to the cast member mm-hmm. and was like 
is this ride like a roller coaster? Or like, what is it? And he was like, my dear, this is not a ride. Mm-hmm. This is a spaceship. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> Cut the shit, Gene. We went to acting school together. Is this ride open? <laughs> exactly. I was like, why are you talking to me like that? That yeah. is crazy. And I guess if I had a six-year-old, I'd be like, this is fun mm-hmm. that he's doing that. But also I'd be like, give me information. I need help. SOS. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I don't think they're allowed to like break character. Yeah, that, they they break that character and like a slow like a red dot just like appears <laughs> on their forehead, and they're like quickly replaced. But um, yeah, it also says millennials are likely a big part of the fandom and criticized specifically because they came of age during the Tumblr era and were the first generation to embrace online fandom. It also intersects with the criticism of millennials as entitled and fiscally irresponsible. Tell oh. that to my ten thousand dollars worth of Legos. Oh yeah, you're a millennial. I am a millennial, and I, um, I've i just accepted it. I'm cringe. Yeah, I don't care. I don't think you're cringe. Thank you. Not I in d- the ways that millennials famously are. You're cringe in maybe other ways. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> Body type and odor. <laughs> yes. Your odor is, well, cringe is a word for it. Just kidding. Um, no, I think it's, I, I love millennials who like wear, you know, friends shirts. Mm-hmm. And I, that's like their trope. Yeah. And my, I love friends. Yeah. I love the show. For, I know it didn't age well, but I, you know, I watched a lot of it growing up. And my friend Charles, you've met Charles, right? Uh, your roommate? Yes. 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 He knows I love friends. And so for like all of my, like my birthday or Christmas, he always buys me like a friend, a friends themed mm-hmm. thing. And it always makes me laugh because I'm like, this is the most millennial thing I could. Like now I own a Tumblr yeah. that says friends on it. And I own like socks that say friends and yeah. a sweatshirt that says friends. And I'm like, <laughs> but I'm Gen Z. Yeah. It's like, you're the Chandler to my Monica <laughs> or something like that. But did you know that there is a friends Lego set? Do you have it of Central Perk? No. Um, I don't know. I haven't bought it, but it's at Target if you're, like, really bored and sad. Yeah. I am. <laughs> yes. I am. Okay, no I'll plans go plans for the afternoon. <laughs> but, oh, my gosh. Poor millennials. I think we give them too much shit, though. I think mm-hmm. we do. I think they're just trying to be, be happy. Um, there have been multiple Disney adult stories that have gone viral in 2020, like, likely contributing to a public hatred of them. <laughs> Yes. A woman shared a TikTok of herself tearfully hugging Pluto for the first time since the start of COVID. I saw this video. Was it during the height of the pandemic? Um, I don't remember. I definitely think, I mean, the pandemic was still bad. Yeah. Um, Pluto reminded her late grandfather. Pr- Pluto reminded oh her of her late grandfather. Pluto reminded her of her late grandfather who loved Pluto. Unfortunately, her emotions made her a target of internet bullying. She later spoke out, calling the comments she received vile. She, <laughs> my my grandpa was a dog. That's why I love him so much. Wait, so I mean- I just can't. I just did the-, the That's where I really draw the line with Disney adults, is when the adults are meeting the cast, like the, the characters. Yeah. Because I'm like, you know, that is a- Teenage minimum boy. Minimum wage worker. Yeah. In a costume. Like that person- it hates that they're there. Yeah. You know that that's not a real thing. Mm-hmm. And you're like crying. Yeah. Obviously, this reminded her of a, a past relative, but like mm-hmm. she's not the first person to cry. Yeah. Meeting a character. Um, and I find that so bizarre. That feels like if I were to meet Santa at the mall. Yeah. And like really be like, listen, bitch, <laughs> this here's is what... what I want for fucking Christmas. I was so good this year. <laughs> <laughs> You don't even, I know, I know you probably have been spying on me and you saw that thing I did in May, but I've made up for it for the rest of the year. It's crazy. <laughs> this guy like smells like cigarettes. <laughs> no, but I mean, I guess it's, it's more symbolic that they like them. I mean, like, uh, yeah, I guess it's symbolic. It's like meeting like a famous person where you're like, oh my God, you were Joe Dirt. <laughs> I pray for the day I meet him. <laughs> oh, I no, love d- Joe Dirt. Dude, um, at my old place where I used to live across the street was this Italian restaurant, and I walked in, and I saw David Spade, and I was like, oh, my God. I was, like, shocked. But then every time I went to that Italian restaurant, I always saw David Spade, and I was like, does David Spade work here? <laughs> <laughs> like, Or he maybe he thinks I work here. 100%. Yeah. 100%. There's also been proposals at Disneyland Paris sparking a debate when a cast member snatched a ring out of a male guest's hand to usher them off a stage in front of the Disney Park castle. The couple claimed to have permission to use the stage, and the Walt Disney Company apologized. Yeah. That feels... Yeah, that feels frustrating. That's a failure to communicate on the cast member's part. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, if they didn't get permission, it reminds me of, like, 
when a straight drunk woman at her bachelorette party gets on stage with a drag queen <laughs> and she just gets violently knocked off the stage. It's like not everything is about you, but it sounds like a communication error. It's always so hard to know because I think I've, as I've gotten older, I've realized people do just like genuinely lie all of the time. Yeah. Like I don't think I really understood that for because it just feels so crazy to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I could see them just getting up there and then being like, no, we got permission. Yeah. Like we really <laughs> permission. <laughs> yes. We I, did. I don't know who we talked to, but we like definitely got permission. This is what I miss about drinking. If I went to the airport and someone talked to me, I would make up a story mm. about who I was. You know, my aunt just passed away and I'm flying home to bury her personally. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> In my you can childhood. Do that sober. Bury my aunt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, lie sober. Yeah, yes. You can lie sober. You can bury your aunt. Yes. You can do whatever you want when you're sober. Yes. You can do whatever you want, Sarah. <laughs> No, I know, but it's more special, like, to be drunk at 6 a.m. Yeah. at the airport. Oh, yeah. Because you can drink at any time at the airport. They don't know if you just flew in from Mexico. Well, they encourage it, I feel yeah. like. Yeah. I, for the first time, I was getting on a flight a couple weeks ago, and this woman was, like, she had to be escorted off the plane because she was so mm-hmm. drunk. And I was like, well, yeah, she probably, from what I could tell, she'd had, like, a really long layover and just, like, went to the bar. Yeah. And it feels like they're, like, setting you up for that. Yeah, almost. that is true. I, um, a couple years ago, I flew from, like, South Carolina to L.A. to be with someone on New Year's. And um, we had a layover in Vegas. And there was a woman absolutely wasted uh. in the in the front row. She's wearing a dress. She puts her feet, like, she smacks her feet up on the ceiling. And her dress comes completely <laughs> down. And that was you? <laughs> no. It was you. <laughs> it was me. No, but it was so fucking. My favorite airport is the Vegas airport because there's just this massive room filled with cigarette smoke. I love Vegas. I love Vegas. I can't even get into how much I love Vegas Mm because I'll talk for an hour, but I love Vegas. It's so fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, They have so many. Vegas is my Disney because it's like everything is set up with a theme. Like you go into a hotel lobby. It's not just a hotel lobby. It's Hawaii. Yeah. They've made it Hawaii Mm -hmm. and now it's like incredible. I am a... If any, I've said this multiple times on a lot of different podcasts, but the person who works the cash register at the Victoria's Secret in the Vegas airport mm-hmm. is my babysitter from 25 years ago. <laughs> yes. Wow. I accidentally peed my pants a little bit on a flight and I had to buy new underwear and I went into the Victoria's Secret and I was like, how do, how do I know you? And she's like, Sarah? Sarah Shower. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're my babysitter. I don't know that if she still is works so there. so funny. But I remember I saw her boobs one time because she t- did that thing where you take off your jacket and you pull up your shirt. Have you ever done that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. And you just fully, I've done that with pants too. Mm-hmm. You took off, <laughs> well, you took off your pants and it took off your shirt. <laughs> it took off my underwear. Oh. <laughs> In the middle of a in the middle of an Applebee's. Okay, um, <laughs> Disney and you just have to process. It. You just yeah. have to process it. Disney fans were. I'm just read it. This is what happens. I turn to read and I fully panic because I'm like I don't know where to read and I just pick a sentence. Yeah. And I'm like I can't just we already read that and also <laughs> yes. has nothing to do with what we were talking about. Okay, the most recent. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, the most recent viral Disney adult incident occurred when a newlywed bride posted to r slash aml the asshole on reddit asking if she and her husband were assholes for not feeding guests at their disney fairy tale wedding at walt disney world allegedly the couple opted to pay nearly six thousand dollars to have mickey and minnie attend two of their wedding events and told guests to find dining options at disney's grand floridian resort or nearby vending machines (laughs) (laughs) disney fans were Disney fans were quick to point out that Disney fairy tale weddings has a catering minimum, so the post was most likely a fake story intended to ignite Disney adult debate. That cannot be true. Mm-hmm. It was later removed by Reddit moderators. Oh my god, you don't feed your guests just so you can have Mickey and Minnie there? That is bizarre. I know, and imagine like telling people just there's a vending machine around the corner. But this is... <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's eating famous Amos cookies. Yes. They're like, help me. They're <laughs> smashing out- famous Amos cookies in each other's faces <laughs> like they do on weddings. Who cleared out the cheeses? <laughs> I just am like, too, I'm very anti wedding in general. Mm-hmm. Not for other people, but for myself. I'm like, yeah. I- I'm not going to. I know how expensive weddings can be. I've been to the most normal weddings, and then I'll be like, how much was this? And yeah. it's like not a wedding that you're like, this wedding was crazy. And they'll be like, $100,000. I'm like, that is crazy to me. It's one day. To me, it's one day, and this is going to sound rude, but I'm like, if you're having to pick between eating and Mickey and Minnie Mouse, uh-huh. just elope. 
What yeah. are you? Do- <laughs> What are you doing? I know. What are you doing? It's too, it's so much money for the, it's so stressful. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And also, I'm really appreciative that on TikTok TikTok now, people are starting to be like, I spent $100,000 on my wedding and I regret it and I wish I didn't have a wedding because I think people have so much pressure similarly to when they have children. Yeah. It was the best day of my life. Yeah. Because I spent so much money, so I have to say it was the best day of my life. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, stop telling people to spend their life savings on a wedding. Yeah. It's horrifying. I would just I would just totally elope. And they st- just I mean Mickey and Minnie aren't even that cool. Like what was the At least get Chip and Dale. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The the strippers from Florida, yes. not the characters. <laughs> you just have the cast of Chip and Dales at your <laughs> Disney wedding. And um, they bring the food. Yes. And then in October of 2020, the uh, uh, Disney adults protested for the Disney parks to reopen. Oh my god. To reopen amid the COVID-19 pandemic. I remember this. They legit protested. Um, they were criticized for being tone deaf and childish. Downright stupid, I would say. Um, however, the motive behind these protests seemed to be about the mass layoffs of Disney cast members, which is horrible, and an attempt to reopen the park so that those employees could be rehired and work again. <laughs> this is the problem. These people have no perspective. Yeah. They have no idea how the world works. I'm like... Yeah. The problem is not that Disney treats their employees terribly, Mm -hmm. period. Yes. That's if the parks are closed, if they're open. Yes, that amount of people not being able to come to work is devastating. That was also happening not just at Disneyland. Yeah. That was happening around the entire country. Um, But it's like, so you're aware how bad Disney treats their employees, and yet you continue to come and spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars every single week. Yeah. Yeah. I think that Disney could have their billions, like they probably trillion dollar company. They could just have their cast members on retainer. It's not like you coming into the park, you know. Yes, that's just a poor like the corporation doesn't give a shit. But I think it really also is this like uh, I felt like people then when it did open, they were so emotional. Like mm-hmm. that girl with Pluto, they, there were so many videos of them like cr- like falling to their knees. It's like a coming home Disney video. Gra- <laughs> yes, yeah, it is. I'm it's coming Disney. home. Coming home. And Pluto's wearing fatigues. <laughs> and then like people are like running up to him, like, Welcome home, Pluto. And they had all well they did they had all the cast members like wave it, like yeah. having you come in. I'm like, all those people are like two hundred degrees in there <laughs> being like, Help me. But they were like people crying. And I'm like, it's the same issue with the weddings. Yeah. Where people, you know, you hear them, they'll be like, Don't call it a party. Do mm-hmm. not call my wedding a party. And it's the same reaction when you call Disneyland a theme park. People are like, don't call it a theme park. It's a lifestyle. And I'm like, it is. Yeah. And they're making you think it's not just a theme park so that you'll spend absorbent, uh, what's the word? Absorbent? Probably. Amounts of money. <laughs> yes. We got to get a third person on this podcast yeah. who only speaks they to help us with reading. They just for us. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I... You're going pretty hard on the Disney adults because I'm like, I'm, I cannot, I, I don't agree with most of these things, but like if it was Legoland, <laughs> I would be like, you know. I'm trying to think if I have something like that. Mm-hmm. Like something You don't have that anything is, gay? I, I <laughs> don't, ha- I'm not gay. What, yes. <laughs> what do you mean do I have anything gay? Um, no, I don't have anything gay that I spend thousands like of Hamburger dollars on. Mary's. Oh, I did go to Hamburger Mary's the other day yeah. for the first time, though. And I, uh, so no, I haven't spent thousands mm-hmm. there yet. It's only a matter of time. But I'm trying to think if there's anything I have that's similar to Legos for you. Well, I mean, you Cleaning do- supplies? <laughs> you just get so fucking excited <laughs> during Black Friday. <laughs> You're like I storming do. Walmart. <laughs> Wait, that you, is how I am. You do a lot of like, um, like comedy stuff. I mean, like if they didn't open up like theaters. Well, that's true. Yeah, that, that's true. I spent a, a weird amount of money at the Upright Citizens Brigade. Yeah, and I uh, don't have t- a ton to show for it. Mm-hmm. And if um, they didn't open UCB, you were gonna yes and your way into some <laughs> local government. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. I'm a. Yeah, that's true. Okay, you're right. I, I love Disney adults. <laughs> no. I love well, I them. mean, it's not about loving them. It's like understanding their perspective. It's like this is something that means a lot to them. They are being crazy about, I mean, COVID-19, you shouldn't have done that. But like they're. <laughs> you said it like they caused COVID-19. Yeah. <laughs> the Disney Honestly, adults. I wouldn't be surprised. They caused COVID. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. No, I support anyone doing something in a normal way. Mm-hmm. Or even a little bit of a weird way. I love if you love Disney and you're like, I love this so much. I have all the ears. I have all the hats. I, l- I love to go to Disney. I think that's awesome. Mm-hmm. 
I think when people treat it like it is like a lifestyle, a yeah. lifestyle that feels bizarre to me. Yeah. And I'm not, well, I, I was going to say I'm not judging, but honestly, it's a pet peeve of mine when people say I'm not judging and they say something very judgmental. Yeah. <laughs> so I am. I'm judging you. Yeah. But I, there are people who move their whole, I, I think when it's just you, do whatever you want. Yeah. But when people involve their families and your husband's having to leave his job he's had for 20 years to move to a town in Florida where everyone oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. has Mickey ears on and your kids are homeschooled and they do all their schoolwork on the grass in yeah. front of the castle. Yes. I'm like, you got to go to therapy. You yes. have to. Yes. You have to go. And you can afford it. Yeah. If you can live on Disney. But I mean, yeah, that's how I feel about um, when you involve kids. That's where I get like annoyed. As someone who's lived in an RV with their parents, I cannot stand when I see those like RV living where we've talked about this before. The yeah. parents will have a master bedroom yep. and and then the kids have five stacked bunk beds and then a the little cubby for their toothbrush and school books. <laughs> and then they film the kids and they're like, how much do you like living in the RV? And then the kid with tears down their face. Yes. I love living in the <laughs> RV. It's like horrifying. <laughs> when I get in trouble, mom takes away the ladder <laughs> and I'm stuck up here and I poop in the corners. <laughs> My mattress is soaked through. <laughs> oh, that's me. And all the kids are like, and he's on the top bunk. <laughs> yeah. And it just comes through the roof. <laughs> Help me. Yes. We love the RV. <laughs> I'm also like, where are you going? They're like, we get to travel the world in our I RV. I'm like, well, first of all, you don't because the you're continental in an RV. US, yeah. <laughs> but as a person who's done a lot of traveling around the US, I did a lot of road trips growing up. Mm -hmm. you, then you don't want to do If anyone's thinking about selling their house and traveling in the US, it's fun for a couple. Just go on a trip. You don't need to spend your life yeah. traveling the US. It's a lot of yeah. just dirt. I had um, the fam. Like, my parents are both in the military, so when we traveled, or it had to be to like a civil war, like area, or like something of like Gettysburg, or like it always was like you know Charleston, where we went to go see all this like war memorabilia. And I remember one time we went to uh, Colonial Williamsburg, and there was a fake. I mean, there was a real cannon, but it didn't work anymore. And I was like, Mom, what would happen if I got hit by a cannonball? And she'd be like, it would rip a massive hole in your chest. <laughs> and then my mom was like, Sarah, can you believe that nearly 900 people are dead here? <laughs> oh, and my I was God. Like, oh, wait, this reminds me of a, um, actually, it's not an important story. But yeah. She um, looks so excited. It's whatever. But yeah, I, I've been to a <laughs> bunch so of sorry. like, I've seen Civil War reenactments. Yes. Mm -hmm. I feel like I would like not allow myself to die. Someone pretends to shoot me, and I'd be like, "I that didn't hit me." Yes, you know, we should go to one of those. We should be in it. <laughs> I love, I love anywhere where people are acting as though, like when they have live reenactors, yeah, who you can ask questions to, and yeah, like, what do you eat for breakfast? And they're like. Well, I porridge. eat porridge yes. Yes. in my cabin. I like freak. And then I'm like, well, how old are you? Yes. And they're like, I'm 62. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> this is so fun. <laughs> when I poop, it falls out of my skirt. <laughs> <laughs> and I blame it on the horse. <laughs> they're like, ma'am, once again, we went over the script with you. Yes. That did not happen. Yes. <laughs> People fully sat down. <laughs> You've got... That's just She's Wendy. Crazy. That's you know. just Wendy. <laughs> She's not even an actor, <laughs> just a woman with a weird dress. <laughs> she um, pays sixty dollars every day to be here. Okay, I say this as someone who is neurodivergent, but I read this line completely wrong. What? It, Disney adults exist on a spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it said. We were like, listen, we know. Yeah, I was like, we, we got know. learning disabilities. <laughs> like, I was like, I thought it, but um, yes. Uh, it's, they exist on a spectrum where <laughs> some are more passionate about the fandom than others. So when it comes to Disney adults specifically, that might be the difference between someone who occasionally watches Disney movies, like uh, me, and others who visit Disney theme parks multiple times per month. It's not per month. It's, we, it's, <laughs> it's daily. Weekly, this is yes. what they're not. It's daily. It's, yes. it's scary. The commute out of Los Angeles, half of it is just people going to Anaheim. And it's the same people, 100%. Yeah. So those are the same people who be like, Oh, and, I, and I'm this person, so mm -hmm. I'm not perfect. But who are like, Vegas is great because you can see the entire world in one weekend. Yeah. The, I've heard Disney adults be like, well, we get to go to Paris. Mm -hmm. We get to go to Japan. We go to all these places. And we're traveling the world. Yeah. And I'm like, you're going to Disney. That's not... That's not the world. Yeah. Nothing that's inside of Disney is related to what is outside of... <laughs> it's just so bizarre to me. Yeah. 
And then some Disney adults resent others for their behavior at the Disney parks, publicly (laughs) complaining about others who choose to run to their favorite rides at Disneyland's rope drop, hoping to beat the crowds. You're just mad you can't sprint. (laughs) Someone walked a mile in high school. (laughs) It's because they're Disney bounding and they have high heels on. I'm in my New Balance. They have a full corset. (laughs) Yes, they do. I'm like, of course you're not going to be able to get a fast pass. (laughs) Yes. And then casual Disney adults might dislike more extreme Disney adults for making them look bad or making Disney fans in general look bad. Yeah, that's hard. That's like anything, though. Do you you have any Lego people that you're like, they're making us look bad? If I did, I don't know of them. I I think that means it might be you. It's me. The call's coming from inside the house. (laughs) I don't Uh know how fucking annoying I am. (laughs) No, I need this is a time for self reflection. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But, um, and Disney adults are criticized for spending lots of money on Disney. Mm -hmm. Hey, who amongst us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've spent my fair share of money On. on things. Yes. Nothing but a lot of cleaning supplies. I have to say it. How dirty are you? Have any, I'm so dirty. Yes. <laughs> but I don't have like a thing that I spend a lot of food. I spend a lot of money on food. Yeah. I love to eat out at a restaurant. Mm-hmm. But that's not very fun. That's A lot of people like to do that. Um, how much do you spend on Legos a month? Oh, shit. I just bought two, um, two of the new uh, botanical sets yesterday. And then uh, a couple days ago, I bought two houses for my Lego street. And then uh, a week before that, no, two weeks before that, I bought the uh, jazz club. So probably about $1,000 this month. That's amazing. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, That's awesome. That's amazing. (laughs) That's the most pitiful thing I've ever heard. (laughs) No, but I'm nearly 30. Sue me. And I'm a millennial. Yeah. <laughs> You're cringe. Just like, I'm playing yes. the part. Come on. You guys are all cringing right now. It means it's working. Like deodorant. Um, but yeah, they uh, two sisters who are Disney adults have been to Disney parks multiple times. Between the two of them, the sisters estimate estimate that they spend at least 60000 to 75000 per person going on trips to Disney, though they suspect it's probably more. Yeah, I bet it is more. That is crazy. It's so alarming. Yeah. It's so scary. But I just would have a hard time not resenting my parents if I found out they spent that much money at Disney. Yeah, and I like couldn't I like couldn't afford to go to college, and they were like, "We just can't af- we can't afford it." And then I like realized how much money they'd spent at Disney. I would mm-hmm. be like, "Fuck you!" Oh, if we want to talk about financial abuse from parents. <laughs> My parents do that all the time. This is where, like, so we talked about um, nepotism babies and, like, people who are raised rich. Yeah. My parents are very well off, but they do not share it with their kids. <laughs> I don't know. So they, like, um, they, like, I, like, when we were younger, they would scare us. They're like, we don't have any money. And then mom, we have, like, five different houses that are all income properties. Yeah. My mom's a doctor. Dad works with some stuff Mm -hmm. um that and i was like when i got to college i was like there's no way that mom is a doctor with five houses could be poor yeah you know and she i just realized that she just didn't want to help us 100 percent. yeah yeah i had the i had the opposite i think my my parents we did not have a lot of money but they would spend they would spend you know it's very similar though they would sit me down every year like clockwork Mm -hmm. we'd make fun of them they sit us down every year and they'd be like we're not doing christmas this year we cannot afford Christmas this year. We're not doing presents. We just cannot afford mm-hmm. it. And then Christmas would come around and they would be like, we, so- we sold our car so we could get you an iPad. And we were like, thank you. They would give us so much stuff. And we were like, they're very sweet. But yeah. they, uh, it was it was almost, there should have met in the middle, our parents. That's actually crazy because like my parents, on multiple occasions, didn't get us Christmas presents when they could afford it. Oh, another one was starving in college i asked my mom for like a hundred bucks for groceries can't afford it come home the kitchen is newly remodeled she's like this cost thirty five thousand dollars but the kicker is is that they custom built that house the year before oh my well that's just wasteful i know like my parents like they have all the money in the world that's so bizarre. Yeah, my parents just they wanted to give us whatever they just kept selling the car they just kept kept selling the car (laughs) they kept buying cars selling cars (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> buy low sell high <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly just give us our christmas but we would make fun of my mom because every year she'd set us down we're not doing christmas this year yeah. I'd be like mom you have no self-control we've learned this yeah <laughs> you're you gotta buy little presents for your kids you love buying little presents yeah very sweet um i'm sorry your parents oh it's okay <laughs> now now i buy myself legos all the time all right mm-hmm. good good 
Um, so, this Christmas, I'm going to get you a big Christmas this year. Yeah. I'm going to get you a lot of presents. I'm going to sell my car <laughs> to give you and your girlfriend. I show up at your house Christmas morning. You're like, thanks, Sarah. And I'm like, I had to Uber here. <laughs> I don't know a car. That was hard with a desk. <laughs> you got me a desk. <laughs> it's because I know you Thank have a you. treadmill. Like, I do. Yeah. So I don't know where you work. But... um. So Not on the I, treadmill. I know you want to talk about homeschooling. This is this is where I have an issue. Mm-hmm. Homeschool their kids while visiting Disney parks. There's a lot of resources for parents who want to use Disney parks in their homeschooling curriculum. Disney also provides some educational programs slash resources for kids. Mm-hmm. They call this Disney schooling. Can you imagine learning sex ed by like, <laughs> so this is a Mickey and this is a Minnie. And when two cast members fall in love with each other, a little felt hole... And penis opens on the minis, <gasps> and then they That's copulate. Beautiful. Is that the right word? Copulate. Copulate. I have no idea. That's just where two cops have sex. <laughs> what is copulate? I've definitely searched copulate yeah. on Pornhub before, but <laughs> yes. I didn't know it was a real word. <laughs> it's half sexual intercourse. <laughs> with two wow. cops. I'm always trying to find just two cops. <laughs> yes. <having sex. laughs> um, that feels crazy to me, especially because I'm like, you. I, I am not. I, I know there's a lot of time wasted at public school. Trust me. I've done yeah. a lot of time wasting at public I've school. I've been wasted I'm... in a public school. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yes. And with your sunscreen bottle. Yes. But I'm like, there's no way that you going to Disney. Think of all the things you have to do. You have to park your car. You have to. And that takes like an hour. You have to get into the park. Then they're hungry. You have to feed them food. You have to do. You have to get around. And then you find a patch of grass to do like. A little spelling test on mm-hmm. that's not schooling. Yeah, I guess I'm commenting on it in a way that they're probably like, yeah, that's not what it is. There's <laughs> probably like an actual like program or like a space. It's like a WeWork you can rent out. That just feels crazy to me. Mm-hmm. And is everything they learn like through the lens of Disney? I'm not sure, but like, am I just imagine now someone doing like a spelling test on the "It's a Small World" ride, and I'm like, <laughs> copulate. C O P U L A. Why is the kid learning how to spell copulate? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so would you Disney school your kids? No. All right. I would. They wouldn't go to school at all. <laughs> they live in an RV. Yes. They're going to be pissing on the top bunk of an RV. <laughs> yes. Some Disney adults move move so they can live closer to the parks, either Disney World or Disneyland. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of articles online that discuss the best neighborhoods near Disney World. That is crazy. Look, I get it. If you've got a bunch of kids and you want a season pass, I'm like, that makes sense to me. That's mm-hmm. fun. I think I just think you can do anything fun with your kids no matter where you live. You don't need to move all yeah. the way to Disneyland. In my town, my hometown, you'd you'd mine for gold. Really? You could do that. Oh. Nobody learned. ever found any, but you you would go to the river and they would have pans that you could use to mine for gold. You just sifted all the live long day. Yeah. They don't have that in Florida. Mm-hmm. I um, I've lived on military bases my entire life, so I could join ROTC or JROTC. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's true. Shoot some guns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, there's something for everybody everywhere. You don't have to move. You're looking for gold, and I am (laughs) shooting trees in the forest of California. Have you ever shot a tree? Um, No, but I have. The first time I shot a gun was at a Big Sandy Camp, which is a church camp up in Michigan. Wow. Mm -hmm. I never shot a gun. Well, I shot a BB gun one time. Yeah. My mom found out, and she was pissed. Yeah. I was like at a friend's house and I shot a BB gun and she was very upset with me. We had like a no guns. I didn't I wasn't even allowed to use water guns as a kid. Mm-hmm. My mom was so anti-gun. Mm-hmm. My parents have always had a gun in the home. <laughs> um <laughs> right on the table. Yes. And we knew what that. Yes. If it was on the table, we knew what that meant. <laughs> Russian roulette who's making dinner tonight. <laughs> or who's not making dinner, I guess. Yes. Oh. Um sorry. It's okay. Um <laughs> It's okay. Um, Golden Oak. Mm-hmm. There's Golden Oak, which is a 980-acre development that consists of approximately 300 single-family homes spread across eight neighborhoods. Uh, these homes have ranged from $3.5 million to $11.85 million. Um, as the houses were quickly purchased, prices increased dramatically. All Golden Oak residents are required to be members of a private club known as the Golden Oak Club, which costs $19,000 per year. They have um, concierge-style services, including tickets for special events at Disney World, private VIP tours at the parks, Disney dining reservations, spa reservations, go- uh, golf tea times, Disney cast members providing services for in-home dinners and parties. You're services. getting a massage from, like, <laughs> the stormtroopers. <laughs> it's like, I should really get, 
I should really go back. I don't know. Um, and even assist it with, with getting your house decked out with seasonal holiday decor. Man. I mean, that you- honestly feels like a lot for $19,000. Can you imagine the guy dressed in a 50 pound, like 50 pound Pluto outfit on your roof? Like putting like lighting up, and he falls off the fucking roof. Yeah, it's like Task Rabbit. They can do any in-home yes. services. <laughs> like, you need help moving? Yes. We'll get the entire cast of Mickey Mouse Playhouse There's over like a, there in thirty minutes. A clog in your sink, and Minnie's head is just stuck <laughs> under like the sink. That is so funny. That is. So, there's um, some homes were designed by Walt Disney Imagineering, the Walt Disney Company division that oversees the design and construction of its theme parks. Uh, one 10,000 square foot home was recently listed for sale for 14.99 million chump change. It's uh, five wow. miles from <laughs> it's five miles from the Disney World front entrance or 10 miles by car. <laughs> so That's on so foot, far. I know on foot it's five miles and it includes seven bedrooms, nine bathrooms, a pool with a rock waterfall, hot tub, four garages. Millennium Falcon, the- Millennium Falcon themed movie theater and Disney themed details. Link to home. I want to see this home. Um, I'm pressing that link. Wow. Oh, it's gorgeous. That <laughs> we move into it. Yes. <laughs> we buy it. We Wait split the rent. This is incredible. <gasps> wow. Okay, it's very nice. Okay. All right, this feels worth it to me. Um, I'm gonna. Scroll down. Okay, so we're just going to talk about is being a Disney adult healthy? <laughs> um, you know, is it a coping mechanism or addiction? It seems like Disney um, can be a coping mechanism for some, which I think you've pretty much beaten <laughs> that. Blatantly yes. said, beaten the dead <laughs> yes. horse of that one. Yeah, yes. 100%. No, I think anything in moderation. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, if you love Disney, that's awesome. I'm not by any means being like all Disney adults yeah. are bad. I think that's great to love Disney. I like Disney. Not really the movies, but I like going to the park. Yeah. Um. But anything done too extensively, mm-hmm. I'm like, what's yeah. happening here? I think especially when you start to, when it starts to alter. I mean, I think they your say that with even. Makeup. When it starts to alter your chemical makeup. But I think they even say with like anything with addiction, it's like when it starts to affect your life mm-hmm. and like the way you have to live your life, that is like a problem. Yeah. I um I'm an alcoholic. Um, but yes, that is and a true. Disney alcoholic. <laughs> Disney alcoholic. <laughs> I have more than ten Disney scones a week. No. Um. So actually, this is kind of crazy. A lot of people don't realize they like qualify for alcoholism. You wouldn't probably label yourself an alcoholic because yeah. that's a whole discourse. But like, um, more than ten drinks a week is alcoholic behavior. Wow. I know, and everyone's like listening, like. I've got like Ooh. four glasses of wine a night. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But um, yeah, I can uh. So Disney addicts out there, DA Anonymous. Yeah, if you're going to Disney more than 10 times a week, <laughs> yes. you have a problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there is a road to recovery. They go through the 10 steps. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> <laughs> they have to go tell a family yes. member. They're like, I'm so sorry I made you go to Disney yes. so many times. Um, so some one Disney fan says it helps them cope with anxiety. Ever since I was a child, my mother would sing me zippa de doo da to myself. <laughs> zippa de doo da. Whenever I was scared or nervous about something, <laughs> usually at the top of a steep ski run that I was probably too young to be heading down. She's like going into surgery. <laughs> They're like, ma'am, you can't be in the room. Zippa de doo da. Zippa de doo da. She's about to give birth. Her mom. I gotta get in there. I gotta get in there. <laughs> Through the years, it was stuck with me as I still find myself humming Disney tunes to lessen my anxiety. That's sweet. Yeah. Um, when I can't, someone else said, when I can't sleep, I close my eyes and step foot into my home park in Disneyland, pacing out each step to one attraction or another, taking note of all the details in between. Before I know it, my mind has run away with the idea, rarely reaching my destination instead, uh, setting on out on a Disney themed dream that saves me from my insomnia. So yeah, I think that that <laughs> your you know, when you're having a panic attack at the stop at the top of a ski slope or yeah. you know, suffering from insomnia. These people got to go to psychiatrists though cuz I am like they've got some good stuff for this. The thing is is like not to bring it back to alcoholism. So like you can have like an addiction gene, um but a lot of times people can so, like, the main reason why I drank so much is because I had such severe anxiety. And so that alcohol was the only depressant that would immediately cause me to stop having anxiety. But mm-hmm. it was a cycle in that, like, when you wake up, you have more anxiety. So, like, it's the underlying thing to the zippity doodah 
And the insomnia is like... She's addicted to zippity doo dah. <laughs> you're becoming addicted to Disney when there is an underlying like medical issue that you could talk to a doctor about. Yes. Like me yes. with my drinking and anxiety. So I'm trying to relate to you, but also say... Watch it. Watch it. Yeah, yeah watch. Yeah, because that's the thing. It's not about what you're doing. What, what The Disney adult to the... And I'm talking about to the most extreme. Yeah. Like to the most extreme. That's not inherently bad. It's just that it's like, why though? Mm-hmm. And maybe let's unpack why yeah. that is. I think that's like with anything. Like I talked about this in my stand-up that you saw, but mm-hmm. after my dad passed away, I started reading a lot of Harry Potter fan fiction. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Did it but calm why? You? Yeah. It did. I don't know why. <laughs> it was, but we needed to unpack what was happening there. Yeah. And why I was going to bed at 4 a.m. because I was reading So much Harry Potter. So much Harry Potter fan fiction. <laughs> and yeah, wasn't hurting anyone. Mm-hmm. It was definitely escapism, mm-hmm. but also maybe I needed to talk to my therapist. Yeah. So some experience post-Disney depression after their Disney park trips when they have to return to their regular life. It's called a hangover. <laughs> um, but Disney version. Uh, a lot of people returning from vacation, not just Disney vacation, suffer from depression or withdrawal. Uh, when they return to their daily routines. The immersive environment at Disney uh, theme parks seems optimized to impact happiness, causing some guests to feel post-Disney depression after their visits. Yeah, so it's just a matter... I mean, everyone's going to be... I mean, I, you know, it's a nice escape, and you have to go back to reality, whether you escaped mentally or physically. But I think that's so, that's part of the problem. It's like, why do you need to escape your reality so much? Especially as an adult. Yeah. I, I get totally understand as a child. It's like, well, you're out of, you don't have the con- all the control over that. Mm-hmm. But as an adult, like when I go on a vacation, even a vacation that I like was so excited to go on and had such a wonderful time on, I'm always like excited to go home. Yeah, and like be with my dog and be at my house. Yeah. And, have a normal day to day life, and I'm like, it's just so sad that you're like, I have to go back to that hell. I, I want to tell you, like, some people do live a nightmare, Kendall. Not me. I mean, these t- people gotta get on TikTok. <laughs> you know, it's so fun being I mean, a TikToker. What could be so bad about living in this modern world? I mean, we get just pandemic, and then like healthcare, and then like minimum wage jobs. <laughs> Why it's, would you? No, yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, but I think just when people are like, well, I just, this is all. Imagine. Well, first of all, yes. if you're spending a million dollars a year at Disney, uh-huh. you could make yourself a pretty nice life. That is true. At home. I don't think people, I mean, this is like, I don't think, I mean, I, I drank a lot. I drank a lot more than other people. But like, so when I think about like justifying Lego cost, I have spent, this is a point of shame, nearly $1,500 a month on alcohol every month last oh, year. Oh, sure. Yeah. And so like if... I'm no longer buying that alcohol that's going to, like, Legos. And so yeah. but the thing is, is you don't see it all at once. You know, like, you mm-hmm. have to, like, when you have this, like, aha moment, this is how much I'm spending on alcohol or Disney, you're yeah. like, oh, I could be building, using it elsewhere. While um, if you can do anything in moderation, then continue it in moderation. But yeah. you just don't see that figure all That's at like once. when I realized how much money I'd spent on being too lazy to connect my debit card to my Venmo. Yeah. So every time I was that paying for something, fee. I was paying like a, a 50 cent transaction fee. Mm-hmm. And then a couple years ago, I, when I was a janitor at a gym, I would pay my rent on my credit card mm-hmm. and I would <laughs> Venmo it. I realized I'd probably spent like $5,000 over the course of a couple years on transaction fees. Yeah, so because I, mean, I literally was too lazy to hook it up to my debit card. I know it's like this is a this is actually another point of embarrassment. When I lived in South Carolina, the electric bill was due every month, but it would get shut off every two months. So every two months, since I didn't pay my electric bill, my electricity would be shut off. And so in the middle of the night, um, I would call them, and then they're like, "Yeah, you just gotta wait till midnight so it can like reconnect." Yeah. So I mean, I never paid an electric bill. I just it at the point of my electricity was shut off. I would pay my bill, and then two months go by, and it would shut off again, and I pay my bill again. My credit is fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I am so stupid. It's actually embarrassing. But I lived alone, so it wasn't For like sure. a yeah. That is wild. Mm-hmm. That's, I'm glad you said the thing about the credit because at first I was like, wait, that's genius. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to do that. Yes. That's awesome. Um, um, yes. To be clear, I think going to Disney is great. Mm-hmm. I just think everything in moderation. Anything too much is too much. Mm-hmm. 
But we do actually have a Disney, well, someone who recently went to Disney <laughs> in the building. I, I don't know if they consider themselves a Disney I guess adult. we'll find out. So who is this? Is this your aunt, you said? I, I think it, yeah. Uh, my aunt's visiting from out of town That's because awesome. Anaheim's down the road. She's staying on my couch. Uh, well, I'm staying on the couch because her back. <laughs> so she's sleeping in my bed and taking my prescriptions, too. That sounds about right. Yeah. That's not, I've met her one time and she was, she was, she's a hoot. Yeah. She's so, a hoot. We're gonna uh, we're gonna have her on, but to uh, talk about her Disney mm-hmm. her Disney experience. Mm-hmm. So we will be right back. Welcome back to the BCC Club. I'm joined by my aunt Carol. Hello, Sarah. I'm so excited to be in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. I'm excited that you're here too. I haven't seen you since I was a toddler. I know you've gotten so big in many different ways. Mm, yes, wider. No, I was talking about <laughs> your bra size. Yes. Our family, us ladies, we got we got big honkers. Mm-hmm. I actually don't think I got that jean because I've been wearing the same training bra that you <laughs> bought me for my 13th oh, birthday. Oh, my God. It means so much that you're still wearing mm-hmm. it. The elastic is completely worn. It's oh, strapless God. now. Well, I'll buy you a new one. Mm-hmm. I can borrow a couple bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, Ann Carol, how was your trip to Disney? Oh, my God. Don't even get me started. It was terrible. Mm -hmm. I went because I originally, well, I found out that my ex-boyfriend, David Mm DiZabaggio, was going there with his new girlfriend, his new hot blonde girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So I took all my Frasier DVDs and I took them to a pawn shop. Mm -hmm. Made a pretty penny off those, by the way. And then I got myself a ticket to Disneyland and I joined them. Okay. Uh, Wait, are you talking about Uncle Dave? Yeah, Uncle David DiGiorgio. Did you guys not get married? No, we were never married, and we never did any of that. He wasn't interested. Oh, okay. Where do you stay when you visit the parks? Well, this time I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express Mm -hmm. parking lot because, uh, well, I was going to buy a room, but I couldn't afford it because I bought three freaking Mickey ears in the park. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were so expensive. They were like thirty nine ninety nine or some crap. Yeah. And I got the original one with my name on it. I got a Ratatouille one. And then I found out you can get one that has a veil on it like you're a brine. <laughs> that must have been shocking for David. <laughs> yeah, well, he didn't know I was there. Yeah. I was hiding in a bush half the time. You should have brought six more Frasier DVDs so you could have got a hotel room. I could and I have already pawned them off. Yeah, oh I didn't have any more. I guess I could have brought Seinfeld, but I... I, I, I I wanted to keep those. No, those are timeless, like Beanie Babies. Exactly. Who knows mm-hmm. how much they'll be worth one day? I was surprised that the Fraser DVDs were worth a kind of a lot. Yeah, that actually is surprising. Um, remind me, do you have any kids? Do I have any cousins? No, you don't have any cousins. I don't want children, and I definitely don't want children after I visited this stupid Disneyland theme park. Mm-hmm. These kids are so ungrateful. Their parents are spending thousands and thousands of dollars, and they don't care. They're crying. They would rather be watching the Coco Melons or whatever on mm-hmm. their iPads yeah. than go into, I saw a woman take her infant baby to the Bippity Boppity Boutique. Uh-huh. She was trying, she was having them, she was paying them hundreds of dollars to put the tiny bit of hair up into a little bun. A baby doesn't want a tiara on their head. Mm-mm. They don't want it. Yeah. So that was hard to see. And I know I'm not I don't have any children. Yeah, I know that babies' skulls are so malleable that if anything, it'll just make a ring around their head. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's very scary medically. Mm-hmm. How often do you visit Disney? It's my first time and mm-hmm. it was my last time. That's really? what I'll say. It was my last time. I'm not interested in going back. It's not even just that it's expensive. It's I don't really like the people who frequent Disneyland. Mm-hmm. I find them to be very aggressive. And, oh, my God, Sarah, when the fireworks started, it felt like I was in the freaking purge. Mm-hmm. It was terrifying. These women start running and running and running. Some of them have three strollers in each hand, it feels like. I, it looks like I'm being attacked in, in the freaking, what is it called? Pretty Transformers. Cool. They oh. look like Transformers. They're running at you. And it's so weird to me because I'm like, listen, Mm -hmm. you can see fireworks anywhere. I've seen fireworks at a 7-Eleven parking lot on 4th of July. Mm -hmm. You don't need to pay a bunch of money for it. Mm -hmm. But it was beautiful. That's incredible. 
And that is true. I love Jersey City's 7-Eleven fireworks. Yes, they mm-hmm. always. You can see fireworks from any part of town in Jersey City. So yeah. I, I, maybe it just wasn't special to me, but I feel like fireworks are not, they're no new invention. That's what I'll tell you. No, no. And then people put their kid up on their shoulders. I'm like, newsflash, the fireworks are in the sky. Mm-hmm. You don't need to put your kid on your shoulders so they can see something that's in the sky. It's ridiculous. Maybe it's to catch the fallout from the fireworks so the parents don't get burned. That actually makes sense, Sarah. That sounds like some something I would do. Mm-hmm. Um, so do you find yourself caught up in the nostalgia of Disney? Like, what's your favorite Disney movie? Yeah, you know, we didn't watch a lot of Disney when I was growing up. We watched MTV. Mm-hmm. You remember MTV? Mm-hmm. Girls Gone Wild. Yeah, we watched a lot of that. But I do, you know, I like Pinocchio. It reminds me of my ex because it's about a lying puppet, mm-hmm. which is exactly like my ex, David DiGiorgio. Mm-hmm. But besides that, no, I don't have anything too nostalgic for me. So why did you go? To stalk my ex-boyfriend. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And guess what? I thought at the happiest place on earth you couldn't get arrested. That is not true. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't arrest you on the Disney parks. They take you outside the parks so they don't get bad PR. Yeah, and it was ridiculous. I thought they'd at least try to make it fun or something. They Mm -hmm. didn't even have Mickey or Minnie or Chip and Dale do it. They just Mm -hmm. had the cops come in. Very upsetting for me. That would actually be kind of cute, like Mickey ears as, like, handcuffs. Oh, my God. I I couldn't afford it if they had it. I'd already bought so many hats. (laughs) You had to get the cheap, like, zip ties. Yeah. Um, So do you did you participate in Disney bounding at all? I know. Well, I kind of did. I went as Ariel because mm-hmm. uh, I've I I didn't do a costume, but mm-hmm. I've had a lot of men try to silence me, and I love to swim. Mm-hmm. I love to swim, and then I tried to do Mickey today. Yeah, coming on the podcast, I lost all my ears on the flight. <laughs> so you lost. You took a flight from Anaheim to L.A. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Waste of my money. <laughs> yes. Who, who, why, why'd you do that? Private, private, oh. f- private flight. Mm-hmm. I could have, very expensive. I could have come pick you I up. I want to bother you, Sam. I'm already sleeping in your bed. <laughs> I didn't want to, I got these back issues. Mm-hmm. Sarah's having to deal with it. I feel terrible. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. I've had so many of your medications. You're going to have to go to Walgreens early. <laughs> Um, so, uh, do you have any Disney collectibles? What, I, I know you said you have ears, but do you have any like backpacks? I don't anything? have any ears anymore. Oh, no, I lost them all on the flight. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't. I wasn't even there. They lost them. I didn't check a bag because it was such a short flight uh-huh. from Anaheim to Burbank. But I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but then I got. I I had them in my carry on. And then I had a bunch of Trident gum that I was chewing on the plane, and I just got distracted. I I don't know. And then. I lost him. So it wasn't even the airline's fault, so I can't even sue anybody. Mm-hmm. Did you ask him if I collect anything? <laughs> yes, I did. Let's see. Oh, no, I didn't buy anything besides the ears. Well, you know what? I bought 16 turkey legs. Does that count? Yes, it does. They have those turkey legs at Disney, and they are really good. Mm-hmm. They taste incredible. Mm-hmm. And it was alarming because I had like 17, 16, 17, 18 of them, and I realized that that was eight turkeys. Over the period of a day? One day. Oh, my. So I collected those. I collected caucuses, I guess. <laughs> Maybe you should be taking my propanerol. <laughs> propanerol. Yeah. So thank you so much for being here. Of course, Sarah. Yeah. I really appreciate you having me on your podcast. I really appreciate it. Do you need a ride home after this? I need a, a couple rides. I need a ride home. I need a ride back to Brooklyn because I... Cannot get on another flight. I can definitely get you a train ticket. Thank you so yes. much. But thank you so much for being on the pod. We hope to have you back someday. Of course, I'm so glad you're mm. making good money now. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm, I can definitely buy 10 Frasier DVDs, We're if you know so, what I mean. Well, if you're looking to buy, I'm, yeah. I'm looking to sell. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. All right, thank you, Sarah. All right, bye. Well, that's it for today, guys. This has been... The BCC Club. With... Kendall Andrew and Sarah Shower. Yes. And thank you so much for listening. If you're a Disney adult, we do apologize if we have offended you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Honestly, I was so mean. Yeah. I'm usually not so mean. I Oh no, you weren't mean. You were just took a lot of anger out on you guys, and I'm sorry. I think that um there's different communities and you know, you're just having a hard time relating to a certain community. I yeah. Am. I am. Yes. But I'm sorry. think um I really enjoyed um my aunt being on. She is <laughs> She's heading back home now, you know. How's she getting there? Uh, 
I don't know. But all she said was, it's a small world. And I was like, what does that mean? So I'm guessing that it's going to be a short trip home. Yes. Yes. Incredible. Mm -hmm. um, thank you guys so much for listening and watching or viewing however you view. Mm -hmm. YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Make sure to rate us five stars. Google Podcasts. Any place you get your podcasts. Yeah. And we will see you next week. Yay. Okay. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>